Welcome to Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, a podcast dedicated to helping modern day believers live out the teachings of the first century church. This podcast is part of the teaching ministry of Dr. David K. Bernard. Dr. Bernard has dedicated his life to studying the Bible and helping believers apply its message to their daily lives. In Apostolic Life in the 21st Century, Dr. Bernard answers your questions about what the Bible teaches and how those teachings apply to everyday life. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. This month, many apostolic students are going to head off to college for the first time. For some, it'll be the first time they've ever been away from home, and it'll be the first time they've ever been away from their local church. If they're attending a secular college or university, it also may be the first time that they're exposed to a lot of ideas that are in direct contradiction to everything they've been taught growing up. Now, some might argue that they should go to a Bible college or that they should go to a Christian college, but you know that in certain academic disciplines, Christian college is not an option. You have been there. You attended Rice University. You attended the University of Texas School of Law. So you've been in a secular college classroom. What advice do you have for apostolic college students who are about to embark on their academic journey or are continuing their academic journey and they're on a secular college campus? Well, first, that's a great question, and it certainly can be a real problem. As you stated, I went seven years to college and law school. I also taught part-time at University of Houston and Austin Community College. And even though that was a long time ago, Uh, It was still very secular, very liberal. It was uh, the sexual revolution was in full swing. Uh, To give an example, I come as a 17-year-old MK from Korea back to the U.S., and I go to Rice University. I'm on campus for a week of orientation, and for recreation, their uh, scheduled activity was to go to a topless bar. Of course, I opted out, and a few of us did something different. But that was just considered the culture. And uh, as part of your student fees, um, they provided various services and student activities. And one of the things they offered were uh, movies, including X-rated movies. You could go for free as a student to an auditorium on campus and watch an R or even, in some cases, an X-rated movie. So that was the culture. In the law school, uh, you'd go to a party. Well, it was characterized by kegs of beer, and somewhere by the middle of the party, everybody was pretty much drunk. So that is a real issue, and I had to face that. And I will say, thankfully, we have some great Bible colleges. We have Urshan College, which not only provides a Bible major um, and ministry majors, but also other majors, general studies and communications and uh, human services, and they're expanding other organizational leadership, other what you might call secular or career-oriented majors. So I would certainly say that Christian young people should consider those options within the UPCI. But as you rightly say, there are many careers and many uh, degree programs that you would have to go to a secular college. And I think that can be fine. Here's what I found as a pastor. I I studied this carefully. We had hundreds of young people go through our church, and I found this. If a student stayed in the area, attended one of the local colleges or universities or within a reasonable driving distance, and stayed connected to the local church, we had a high retention rate. Or if a student went to, at that time we didn't have Urshan College, but to one of our Bible colleges or Urshan Graduate School of Theology, equally high retention rate. In fact, higher than people who didn't go to college at all. So that proves you can go to college and live for God. Uh, And I think maybe it was even a higher retention rate because we were very intentional about offering uh, training to our college-age kids, who what we now call hyphen, giving them resources and giving them Christian apologetics, uh, answering some of the questions. So I think I would say, from a local church standpoint, You need a strong hyphen group. You need teachers who can engage. And, of course, now we have resources online. We have resources through UPCI, my podcast, the books I've written, as well as many other books. You give resources to your college-age kids uh, so that they have answers to all the questions. 
But what I did find is those students who moved away to secular college, to another city, left our church, although I tried to connect them to a church in their area, we had a very high rate of loss. And so based on my experience, I don't really recommend that, except in rare cases where you have a very intentional plan and you connect them to the church. So the, the, the good news is we've got great UPCI colleges and options. Uh, also, we have a great track record of, yes, you can be successful in retaining young adults in church, even though they go to secular college. But now speaking more specifically from the student's perspective, one thing my parents required, first, they wanted me to go. I didn't have the option of staying in the home area, so I did have to move 7,000 miles away. They wanted me to go where there was a strong church, and they connected me to the pastor, and they personally contacted the pastor. So I would say if you're moving out of your own local church area, you need to be intentional and work with your pastor to get connected to another church and be committed to that church and meet that pastor and make a commitment. Second thing I would say is prioritize church and spiritual life over college life. That's what I did in both Houston and Austin. Church activities took priority. Uh, even church social activities, the, the youth group, the college age group, those social activities took precedent it's over secular activities. I did lose some, you might say, by not making as many close college friends. My, my close friends from college days are church friends that didn't go to my college, but they were in the youth group or the singles group. But I think that's vitally important because when your main focus becomes the campus and social activities and friends, that is going to be maybe even more influential than what you actually learn in class. So what you're taught in class, you can learn to um, eat the meat and spit out the bones. You can get resources to counteract everything they're telling you. You can learn to answer not what you personally believe, but accord, you can answer, well, as we were told in class or according to the following professor, the evaluation of this matter is as follows. And so you can learn to get a good grade and stay clear of uh, the pressure while not caving in in your own belief system. But the bigger challenge is the social life and the peer pressure. And so I would recommend, to go back to what I was saying earlier, uh, my parents did not want me to live on campus in the dorm. But I, as an undergraduate, I rented a room from a family in the church. And as a graduate a student, I got my own efficiency apartment. So the first thing I would say is stay connected to your local church, if at all possible. Even if you have to drive um, a distance, be faithful to your local church. Number two, find um, a living arrangement, preferably that's not a secular dorm, but a Christian family, a church family, or Christian roommates, or whatever you can do that pre preserves the atmosphere of the home, that's what I would recommend. And then third uh, in, in, of this list is prioritize your church life and your church friends and your church social activities, even ministry. Uh, I, I taught Sunday school. I was a youth leader. Um, I taught home Bible studies. I did soul winning. I was involved in campus ministry. So a lot of my discretionary time was not the extracurricular activities given by the college, but the extracurricular activities given by the church. And that really kept my focus uh, on church. And sometimes you might think, well, I'm too busy in college. After I get out of college, I'll do ministry. After I get out of college, I'll teach Sunday school. After I get out of college, I'll win souls. I'll teach Bible studies. You'll never have more discretionary time than you have right now as a single adult if if you're the typical you know, young adult going to college. So you have to make time for your priorities. You, you'll never have more than 24 hours a day. So it's really a matter of priorities. And yes, uh, taking hours of study is important, but so is taking of hours of, of church important. And, and so if you engage in church life, not just merely showing up for church, I found from the other side as a pastor in a city where there are many students coming in, if a student 
uh, just showed up for service but didn't involve themselves in the other activities, we probably wouldn't keep them. But if they would come to the, the scheduled youth activities, if they would get involved in at least some outreach activities, uh, then we would very likely retain them. So I believe, yes, you can definitely live for God in a college setting, but you have to be intentional. You have to make church your priority, and you have to maintain a strong relationship with God through prayer, church attendance, study of the Word of God, studying to know what you believe, why you believe it, reading some books on a college level, which we now have great UPCI authors and great UPCI resources, and you've got to make that your priority. If you're intentional, you make it a priority, yes, you will live for God. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. We hope you'll make plans to join us again next time when once again we take a look at how the Bible applies to our everyday lives. 